we did it. We've teamed up, and together we've created something special. We are the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and we're changing the game. We're covering Idaho high school sports in a way that you haven't seen before. Together, we'll be providing weekly breakdowns and recaps while helping uncover Idaho's top talents at a deeper level. Trust us, you want to be part of this. Boise Sports Talk, EBC Media, and the Game Time Guru bring you Gem Session. Let's get to work. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gem Session. We are back after a one-week hiatus, uh, but we've got plenty of content coming your way alongside Ty from Boise Sports Talk, AJ from EBC Media. I am Shane from the Game Time Guru. This is the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and today we are joined for the first half of this show by a special guest of ours. He has been here in the Valley for quite some time. Um, I remember him. We were just chatting before the show started. I remember him my senior year in high school. I was at Meridian. He was at Mountain View just getting started over there at that time, um, and he's still there killing things um, as the Mavs head coach, uh, taking taking control of the basketball program over there. This is Coach John Nettleton. So, Nettleton, thanks for joining us, Coach. We appreciate you. Hey, no problem. Uh, back then, though, I had a lot more hair back you know, 17 years ago. So, Hey, it's it's shining bright today, so we're good with that. It's like yeah, an it's shining bright is right. <laughs> Coach, we're excited to have you on here with us, and we we appreciate everybody who's tuning in. We want to remind everyone, if you guys uh, want to show us support, please just subscribe to the channel. It's super, super simple. Sub subscribe to the channel on, on YouTube and share it with your friends and family, grandma, grandpa, anyone. Teach them how to use YouTube on your phone or something and uh, pull it up and let's watch some shows and talk some, talk some sports. So, okay, so coach, we want to pick your brain real quick uh, a little bit and just get to know you and, and the, the team this season. So, this year, I think actually Ty just, you know what? I want to let Ty talk about the last game because Ty was over there and got to see Baylor Perrin tear it up for a 30 plus point performance. 32, I think, is what he put on him. So, Ty, go ahead and, and talk about that last game. Maybe let's get it started with that. Yeah, I love it. Um, we've all we've all been big fans of Baylor. He's been one of the most supportive guys to what we're doing. Uh, you know, big, big fan of ours during the football season. He was he wasn't afraid to let us know when we were wrong about something, but it was all in good, all in good fun, all in good love. Um, I would love to hear about his, you know, his, I'm going to say his physical journey, because he has clearly been putting in the work and has, you know, really solidified himself as one of the, the top players in the SIC, really. Uh, I would love to hear about, you know, the offseason work that he put in to get to this point. Well, you know, Baylor's been with me for three years now. Uh, he has obviously, like you just said, put in a ton of time. And one of the things is he's transformed his body from uh, the previous season. He used to play football. And I know he's not that tall, but he was a little bit thicker. He used to play linebacker. And he had some back problems. Oh, kind of start up when he was playing into his sophomore year and had to stop playing football because of the wear and tear on his back. And he lost like 18, 20 pounds. Uh, and – he, he, like I said, he kind of transformed his body and he he's always been a, a, a phenomenal passer uh, as you guys like to put on your posts. He's dropping dimes and whatnot, sure. but uh, he he's always had great vision looking up the court, whether it's in the half court, you know, finding guys, but uh, uh, you know, his shot, you know, started off pretty strong this year and then he kind of went into a little bit of a slump and then man, Skyview has been his, his team because he lit him up when I think he was a sophomore for like 29 and coach Sanders kind of gave him a hard time in the shake hand line at the end and just said, man, what is it with you and lightness up all the time. So Sky, he's kind of his, his, uh, I guess he has a great feel when he gets to the line and shoots against them for whatever reason. But, uh, boy, was he, he was efficient. He was like 12 for 17 from the field, five for eight from the three, three for three from the line dropped, uh, two assists and whatnot. But, he was he was firing. My my favorite play from that game, as you guys probably saw, I, I blasted it all over the stories. But he he nails a three pointer on offense, and I was just like, you know what? I'll, I'll film him coming back on D. And all of a sudden, I see his eyes catch the ball coming down, and he just oh the block. He had probably the block, one of the best blocks of the year. And you know, I just love seeing him get it done on both sides. Hundred percent agree because I get on him a little bit about defense uh, sometimes, and in, in the sense of you know, bringing that same attitude and behavior. And, and he does a great job, but, you know, as coaches, man, we want our kids busting their hump on, on both sides always. So he kind of played, 
kind of coy coming down like he was strutting a little bit, hitting the well, three, and then all of a sudden left hand comes over and bam against the wall. And yeah, he kind of got... kind of played that one like a free safety, was just kind of wait, waiting to see how the play was gonna develop, and then he, yeah. he took advantage. <laughs> he did. That that was it was a pretty cool block for him. Yep, love it. AJ, what you got for coach, man? No, I want to ask about your junior. Um, you know, his ceiling is crazy high. I know he's <laughs> He's developing. He seems like a pretty confident kid. Uh, you know, you've got that group of senior guards that, you know, have been successful uh, at the JV level. I know they won the district tournament, I think, as sophomores altogether. Baylor was with yep. you at that point. But um, a guy like Nate Ajoku comes along and you put him in the middle of all those senior guards. I mean, that's a good situation. How is Nate taking to, you know, kind of being being the guy? He, he's your leading scorer, I think, at about 15 a game. Uh, how how has that group come together with with a guy like Nate coming up and now you know Bennett and the Logs and Twins and those guys are are now playing you know I know they played last year but you know a bigger role this year playing with Baylor you've got a nice group how, how's that mixing you know I think with with any group of guys it, it kind of takes some time just to kind of figure each other out although a lot of those guys did play together Baylor being one of the ones that was with me longest but. Uh, you know, I think Nate is, is, is definitely, you know, been a, a huge part of our success. And, you know, I think one of the things with him and it's just being coached up and, and going through the process of just uh, improving. And, you know, sometimes I think, you know, the, the cliche of it's a process gets overused at times, but it truly is. I mean, I, I think you go through your ups and downs and, you know, Nate has, has kind of had those at times whether it's been, you know, shooting, you know, from the field or from the free throw line and whatnot. And he, he's such a, a unique dynamic player because he plays above the rim. He also has a, a phenomenal ability to find guys, his ability to, to find guys in the open floor. And even in the half court, you know, he, he does a great job, you know, Skyview ran a, a two, three against us. And I put him at the high post uh, that game instead of the low post and, kind of wanted to get it to him. And then he just finds guys. He'll drop it down to the low guy for layups or he'll kick it to the wing. And whether we're trying to find Baylor or find the twins or Zach or, you know, Dyson or whoever's in there. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, he, he's done a really good job. And I told him again to the year, I said, Hey, you know, we're going to run the offense through you. And I've had to tweak it a little bit. So, you know, maybe I put a little bit too much on him in the early part of the season with uh, some of our offense, but we, we kind of went back to one of my old school, uh, offenses besides four game where we, we kind of run two bigs. We, we do two pin downs and then the guards come off and then the ball keeps up on top. Uh, and then we kind of find guys, whether we're slipping the screens, or we're finding shooters and uh, it, it's come, it's come along quite well with this group. And uh, I think, you know, we've, we've been doing that now for about five, six games and the kids are getting better and better at it. So uh, it's, you know, one of my goals is always being played, you know, always by the time we hit districts, be playing our best. And, you know, we got five games before that happens. So, you know, we got a lot of room for improvement, but uh, I think, uh, I think they're coming along real nicely. Yeah. You, you've been, I mean, since I've been here five years ago when I used to coach against you when I was at Eagle, ever since I've been here, you, you always get your teams playing their best basketball at the end of the season. And I think, and I may be wrong, but I think you've made the state tournament every single year I've been around. Uh, I mean, you just always find a way to get there. Guys always kind of put it together. And I'm anticipating the same thing happening with this group, especially because they're so senior loaded and those seniors have had success. Um, is Dawson Wall a guy that's going to be back soon? Is Brevin Bender? Brevin Bender yeah. for me was a huge loss for you guys. I love yeah. his game. He's one of the top sophomores. Is he going to have a chance to get back? You know, that, that's been unfortunate because we really haven't been healthy all year either. I mean, not that everybody else has been healthy either. You know, we've had, you know, Jackson Beck has missed like three crucial games just because, uh, one, he was uh, sick, and then, two, he was out of town on a football uh, recruiting trip. And so, you know, the Centennial and the Eagle game, we didn't have Jackson. And that, that was huge. You know, he, he's a huge part of our post play uh, and just brings that that football toughness and gets after it and whatnot. But Dawson, he's, he's three threes a game money. I mean, the kid can yeah. flat out shoot and he's six, five, he's long, he's smart. He can rebound, defend, and he hasn't played a minute yet. So he's been practicing. Finally, he just got word from the doc that he's got to wait till the next appointment, uh, which isn't until after the regular season, which 
it is what it is. You know, I want the kid to heal up. He cracked two ribs in his back in football. And so he's been resting the whole year. And, you know, I know football is what's going to, you know, that's what he's going to be playing after high school. And we would never want him to, to get injured to the point where he can't, you know, play for that for sure. And so we're just taking our time. And obviously now the goal is to have him by districts. And, you know, if not, if we're fortunate enough to make it to state, then have him at state. But uh, he's a great kid. He's been at practice every day. And he's finally been practicing full time. So it's been fun to, to watch him, you know, get out there again but uh <clears throat> brev on the other hand i don't know you know he's been going through rehab and his shoulder has been doing pretty good you know he smacked that up early early fall with uh oh i think it was uh, i'm trying to think up tempo was uh, the team he was playing with and just landed on it ended up dislocating it and if i'm not mistaken also the the, the pre conceived time coming back i guess when he had surgery was you know, maybe by districts, but with him, it's a little bit different because he hasn't been able to do anything. You know, he hasn't run, he hasn't shot. He just barely starting to do some of that stuff right now in terms of, uh, you know, dribbling and shooting. But uh, overall, I don't know if he'll be able to actually do anything once he does come back just because of that. So, but you're right. I mean, that's a huge loss. His his athleticism and ability to, to, to move on the court I kid around. I, I, I tell him he floats. It doesn't even seem like he runs sometimes. He just kind of moves so smooth. And that's, I don't know if you knew this, you might have, but uh, that's Zach Bennett's cousin, yeah. which makes sense in the terms of how quick they are. Cause Zach, uh, he's super fast, but uh, that, yeah, those are two big losses, you know, in terms of our team and it is what it is. It's next guy up. It's just kind of way it goes. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do down the stretch. You know what's interesting about Brevin is I I had never I didn't even know who he was and I went and randomly was watching a a tournament a, a club game and I think it was August like they were doing a random club game over at Metal here locally and a couple of my guys that I coached put the, together a team and I want to go watch him play and he was on there I'm like who is this guy like that was before he got hurt it was right before he got hurt like I think it was very shortly before he got it was like a two weeks before or something I can't remember but uh, he was just a monster so yeah when. I think AJ broke the news to us about Brevin. I was like, oh, no, because he is an athlete, absolute yeah. stud. So hopefully when he heals up next year, at least, like when that guy gets back on the court, whenever it is, uh, he'll be able yeah. to come back full speed because he's he's something to watch. Yeah. Now, he I'll can get ahead. up too. He's got oh, some yeah. crazy athleticism. I'll tell you what, though, Owen McBride has stepped in for him big time for us this year. You know, a sophomore played on the soft team last year, you know, and – he just, he's tough. You know, he's got that football DB mentality. He's just going to stick his nose in there. And I mean, he had two threes against Skyview and uh, he set some big shots for us and, and whatnot. And he's, he's turned into a pretty good, uh, pretty good ball player in terms of just being a, a rookie, you know, trying to get, get going this year. So that, that's been nice. Well, the, the future looks pretty bright there too, not to look ahead. Cause I, I like your team this year, but you, like you said, Owen McBride it, with football too, I remember, uh, you know, Mason Childs and Braden Garrison coming up to me after a game, uh, after Ryland Elliott went out, and they said, man, Owen McBride is surprising everybody on the football field at practicing games. He's he's way ahead of where we thought he was. And, it, it, and you know, so that doesn't surprise me that he was able to make your team. Um, he's only a sophomore. Yep. You know, Brevin next year, Dyson's back, yep. Dawson, and then obviously Logan Housefight, who's a, an eighth grader uh, who I think is uh, sniffing around Mountain View. A little I'm going bit. to watch him tonight. They got a big game versus uh, Lake Hazel uh, Middle School. So kind of a Mountain View feeder middle school yeah. game. So we're going to – me and Thank my uh, assistant know we're going to go check that game out tonight. But, uh, no, I agree with Owen. I mean, the kid is, is just tough. You know, and I tell you what, he's got to be. He's got to have bragging rights around the house because all his sisters are Division One <laughs> something. So he's got to he's got to keep the family name going. That's yeah. right. He is. He is. That's so cool. Now, Coach, I want to ask you a question. You know, we've talked about your team this year, and we, before we were talking about just you've been there for a while. Is it seventeen years now? How it's long? Seventeenth year at Mountain View. Seventeenth wow. season at Mountain View High. So this is what's crazy. Is th historically speaking, you've had some amazing teams aj alluded to it you've made it to state quite a few times i mean it's pretty consistent consistent we had a okay. little bit of a spell a few years but 
10 out of 16. So 10 out far. of 16 is a pretty good number. I'll just tell you that right now. Like that's consistency. That's consistency that speaks to your, your greatness as a coach. And you've had some really talented athletes. I mean, I can just name a few from the time I was there. I mean, the person fields were there after I was, after I was gone for a few years. And then I know Galloway was there, you know, you've had some big named athletes and of those names, I am curious, what do you think of the, these guys that have come through the program? Like back in the day with me, it was Wellman and Shoemaker. Shoemaker obviously made the NFL, but like, you had Shoemaker, you had uh, uh, Thompson, the, the seven-footer, all these guys, and then you had the other dudes. What stands out to you the most about their work ethic? So the athletes that are maybe there on the team right now or the athletes that are listening right now, what's the work ethic like for some of these guys that you've been able to coach that were kind of like the top-tier level players? Well, you know, I, I think work ethic is is something that, you know, I don't really throw around loosely because, you know, kids obviously in season are going to, come out and they're going to practice they're going to play and then you have AAU which has just grown to another level since you know I first started coaching way back in 96 uh that being Wisconsin but still you know AAU club ball however you want to look at it totally different deal right now than what it used to be uh and so you know kids are playing that but I look at work ethic as getting in the gym on your own and you know working on your shot working on your game you know, I think when you play AU games and that, I think it's awesome because it works on your IQ and it works on playing together with teammates. But when it comes down to it, you know, shooters are made in the summer in a gym where nobody really sees you. And the same thing with handles and the same thing with getting stronger in the weight room, whether you're at OTF with my guy Bateman or if you're, uh, you know, lifting with your dad or whoever. The the point is, is that that time that you spend in the gym on your own, is where you see that growth. And, you know, just real recently, you know, I could tell you a couple, couple guys, you know, if you look at Noah White, you know, two years ago or so, Noah played for me as a junior and, you know, I had an okay year. It wasn't too bad. Uh, he came back his senior year and man, you could tell the difference, just his attitude and his aggressiveness and his ability, you know, to get it, get to the rim. That's the kind of growth as a coach you're really looking for. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, the, the twins and Zach and Baylor have had a little bit of that. Uh, one guy that I, you know, that that stood out just from the sheer amount of hours that he was in the gym was Galloway. Uh, he would be at Mountain View's gym every morning before school, 530. He'd be lifting, he'd be shooting, he'd be playing against Sammy Christensen and Bauer and some of those guys that would come back and play in the mornings and get his butt whooped. And then he'd come to practice and and get better and whatnot. And you know, some of those other guys, I know they did it on their own. I think uh, Baylor was working on with uh, Juku this summer in the fall before school started and, and got in the gym. And but Juku's always in the gym with uh, – oh, Coach Paul? Yes, Coach Paul. Yeah. Oh, Paul yeah, yeah he's, he's always got him working. And you can tell Nate's game, his shot especially, has improved. And uh, that's the kind of, you know, grind that, that – coaches like to see because you see that improvement and you know I try to get the improvement during the season and I think as a team that's really what you're working on and yeah we work on your shot and we get shots up but in a game you know you might get what seven shots if you're lucky you know and unless you're Baylor and you like to shoot it 17 times but uh, you know other than that <laughs> you you only get like five six shots but if it's on your own in that you're getting 50 100 200 shots that's where your growth's coming from. You're not going to get that as much, you know, practice. We try to give you some volume of shooting, but uh, man, kids, you know, they want to play college ball and I, I try to tell them exactly what, you know, they need to do in that. But one of the things is, is getting in the gym and, and improving because once you get to college, it's a different deal. You know, you're putting in some serious time and uh, it doesn't even matter the, the, the level anymore. You, you got to put in the time. So interesting. And you just mentioned another name. You got Sammy Christensen. I love Sammy. Shout out to Sammy. But you actually, you mentioned Jake Bauer. Bauer, dude, he went to Mountain View, but it might nah, have been before you coached. Meridian. <laughs> yeah, that was the big old, uh, when I when I got to Meridian, Bauer had gone over to Mountain View. For those who don't know, I actually had Bauer on my own podcast because he was a, a lightning shooter back then. And oh, his senior year, he decided before to my time. He, dude, he was, uh, he was I came amazing. in year three. So he was with Coach Saris for, that very first year. And then Sarah said that second year. And then I came in year three. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Bauer six, four, two forty, could move faster than anybody I've ever seen. He was a brick wall. 
he shot from like five feet behind the line. He was Curry before Curry ex- existed, but then he went to football and Juco all American football. And then he went to Tulsa and played quarterback over there too. And he's a stud, man. He had quite the, oh. and it's cool to see him still out there. So he yeah. still hoops from time to time. I, get uh, against him. I see him every now and then uh, he is a chiropractor over in Nampa, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And I think he's on a city council. Yeah, yeah, he's doing big things. Yeah, he's doing all kinds of stuff. And he I see him every now and then. We've had alumni nights, and he, he's come back for it. But I'll tell you what, I want to meet great, great, great grandpa or grandma Bauer because that that lineage is insane. That Nampa Skyview, wherever they land, they just it's all Division One athletes. I, I don't know who grandpa was, but that guy must have been a stud. <laughs> Yeah, what AJ knows the volleyball scene, right? Like, holy cow! Yeah, I I was actually I was talking to Alex Bauer right before the show. They're in Omaha. A bunch of these Idaho girls are back in Nebraska, which is like volleyball central. They're number one in in the country almost every year. Uh, They're over there and they're playing in the championship game of a big tournament over there. So led by the Bauer girl, right? (laughs) Of course, no. The Bauer power chant, Bauer power. That was that was what we had to hear my my sophomore year when he was a senior. So good times. Yeah, I, my whole point with that was is like Mountain View has had historically just some amazing players, and it and it's just crazy to see like how many have come through over the last fifteen to twenty years. I mean, fifteen to eighteen. It, well, how long? It was 03 that it opened. Uh, Nineteen years we've been open now. 19. So yeah. Oh three. Okay. That's right. 03, I'm 03. the youngest one here, but the fact that Mountain View has been open for 19 years makes me feel old. So <laughs> that's just so we can let's, let's clear the air here. So Mountain View opened my sophomore year and I had to go to Eagle my freshman year along with a ton of Meridian kids. I live five minutes from Meridian high school, but I had to go to Eagle my freshman year because Mountain View was being built. Meridian was overcrowded. They wouldn't let us transfer over there. And then my sophomore year, all of us went back over to Meridian and that's why we had the, the Mount. It's, it seems like it was just yesterday. To you had to go to like Eagle? Tyson. I had to go to Eagle my freshman year, along with a ton of us, uh, like Jake, uh, Jake Burroughs, like all of our guys, like the football players. We were all over at Eagle, and then we came over to Meridian our sophomore year and graduated from Meridian. We're all Meridian was guys. A nice close drive. Oh, yeah. A nice little 25-minute bus ride because I didn't have a license when I was a freshman, so it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you got to love that. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we had a little tiff with Mountain View, but when Ty said that, it, it, it's true. Like, I feel like it was just yesterday. And oh, it goes fast. It was fast because Mountain View was the Rocky Mountain, which is now the Owyhee, like the new school that everybody was like mad about yep. coming into the valley, and now it's not. <laughs> so yeah. it's crazy. So let's uh, let's see. Does anyone have any more questions for Coach as we get ready to wrap it up for him? You know, I, I do have one, and it really it's more of a compliment, uh, but I'll tie it into a question. You so, something that I've noticed, uh, you know, over the last few years running Boise Sports Talk, have obviously followed your page. Uh, you in particular do a great job of getting media coverage out for your guys. Uh, you know, you're one of the only coaches putting out score updates. You're, in, you know, letting people know when guys draw charges. I know you guys are big about the, the charge chain. Charge chain, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, what what kind of value do you think? Uh, oh, there, here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah, there you got it. Yes, sir. I love seeing that. We, we we don't need any other stats except for how many charges are drawn each time. That's hey, Camden Hyde's got thirteen on the year, man. Wow. Okay. Who was that? Camden Hyde. Camden, Camden Hyde. Hyde. Okay. All right. I love minutes. It. Um, but speaking of of the media coverage, um, what what kind of value do you think that that helps bring in i know we touched on it before the show about you know just getting that exposure for idaho kids who otherwise might not get it uh i would say you're clearly on board with this kind of new wave of uh technology and you know getting the info out there yeah you, you know probably I, I just kind of put it together like this you know everything that i do within our program i've always put together with the main purpose of hey if i was playing for me what would i like to do you know, what are the concepts, the things that I would enjoy doing? And so just about anything and everything, you know, I'm just I'm trying to come up with new stuff for the kids each and every year. You know, it, it could be just a little small stuff. So you kind of see behind me, I have a list that's on the uh, wall. It's a Velcro with their names on it. And every time they get every time they get a charge, they get a little sticker. And so we have a ranking of the uh, charges. Uh, of course, that goes with my charge chain. And then I if I move over to the side there. There's a bigger one over there. Those are my half court shots we do before practice. So everybody gets two shots. If they make them, we mark them, we chart them down there. And then the, the winner at the banquet gets a big, uh, oh, got like a case of Gatorade or something, just something kind of cool to do. But those Love. little things like that, plus the social media, all that kind of stuff, it's just, 
that's what kids are doing, man. I mean, I, I love technology because that's what I teach. So maybe that's a, a reason why it comes, you know, second nature, just easy to me and whatnot. I mean, I love our video board too, man. Uh, it's like Christmas around here, throwing all that content up there and our hype video and all the intro stuff. Uh, my kids that have graduated years ago, every time they, hey, what'd you do this year, Nelson? What'd you put up? I say, hey, we got the video board now. <laughs> so it's just, it's been a ton of fun. And I, I think, you know, the media falls right into that, you know, social media or media that comes to the games. Anytime you can promote our kids, I think it's awesome. You know, uh, I feel the way in which you guys go about, you know, showing the, the, the Instagram reels and all that stuff. And by the way, I'm kind of new to the gram. I, I only joined it because my kids are on it all the time. So I was a Twitter guy forever, but that's more of a kind of a coach thing, maybe more of an adult type uh, app, to be honest. A great resource, I'll tell you that. But uh, the gram is where all the kids are. So if I want to get things out to the kids, especially our student body, I'm always using Instagram. Uh, but I appreciate you guys doing this stuff, you know, coming to the games, taking pictures, videos and whatnot. Uh, and then I'm still trying to figure out the story thing because I never do any stories. But when I click on it, trying to figure it out, why isn't that going? It says, do you want to keep it? I'm like, all right, whatever. I just want to watch it and see what's going on. <laughs> That's that's the old guy in me trying to figure out all the stuff that's with it, but I'm learning. You know, I'm hey, you got to learn every day something new. So I'm no, trying to you're, figure you're, out. You're doing I'm a great learning. doing a great job, Coach. <laughs> yeah, hey, Ty, Ty is still teaching me and Shane how to do a bunch yeah. of things. So it's it's all good. And Coach, you were actually I think you were the very first one uh, to really open the door for us to come to a football game this year. I think Mountain View wow. was the game we went to. So we. You have been, you know, a huge advocate of ours, you know, behind the scenes. So is Coach Saner over at Meridian. You two have been instrumental in, in helping us build this. You guys are part of this foundation that, that we've built here. And so we appreciate you as well. Uh, people don't know who have who's helped us behind the door, uh, but, you know, open doors for us. And you, you are one of those guys, and, and you are very appreciated uh, by us, I know for sure. Well, it's both, it goes both ways. You know, the, the, the media coverage for the boys – you know, any sport in our states, in the Valley, wherever, uh, is good. Because if coaches can see this, you know, at the next level and, oh, you know, what this is or what's that, that type of stuff, it's it's huge. So I appreciate it for sure. Thank you. Coach, you rock, man. We appreciate your time with us today. And uh, no we look forward to seeing what you guys do for districts and then hopefully, you know, potentially state as well. But uh, we're, we're about five games off. Let's go. So uh, uh, we'll be covering you soon. Thanks, Coach. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. We'll see him at state. This is what he does. That's what he does. Consistency. I got a new, I got a new nickname for him, Mr. February. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I take that. <laughs> Mr. February. We'll put that down. Like now, that. As, as we get into the the remainder of the show, um, AJ, what I was thinking when you just said something there to, to coach, it was regarding uh, how Ty's helping all of us with our social media stuff. I thought I would take a second to, to elaborate on that for a second. Um, so for those who don't understand, Ty, he obviously runs Boise Sports Talk. Go check out his page if you haven't done so. You'll see that the graphics that we pr provide um, are typically coming from Ty. Okay, there's a few things that like AJ or, or myself will create in regards to certain other things, but the majority of our graphics come from Ty because if you check out his page, Ty's uh, very, very gifted as an artist when it comes to digital, you know, art. And so it's... Uh, I remember last Watch year, <laughs> his face is turning into the same color as his hair, dude. Listen, so last year, I remember when I first met Ty and AJ, I remember being in a chat because I was like asking Ty, like, how do you even make this? I didn't even know that this. I was like, how do you make this person stand out on this picture without the background? Like, I didn't even know. What, I didn't know the basics of using Canva. I just knew that Ty used it. And like, at first I thought he was being super secretive. I'm like, and I said something like Ty's acting like I'm asking for the codes to the vault in DC. I just need to know how to do this. And he has helped me just by a couple of tips that he's provided me. Now my graphics are nowhere near what he does, but it has helped me so much with just like understanding Ty is so gifted. And then, so just so you guys know, Ty knows a lot that has helped me. And as well as AJ, like he said earlier, understand how to do graphics a little bit differently than what we were doing before. Now, AJ, we were at a game, Hawaii High School. For those who think that you can just do a story, like you can just put your, your phone out and just do a story and everyone can do it and it's easy to do that, you're wrong, okay? Because especially in a game where there's a lot of content going back and forth and you might be the only one covering, it's actually a process that you don't understand because you're trying to type and tag players that you don't even know all their tags yet. 
So and you're and AJ does a lot of graphics with his like he puts the like if it's the Capital Eagles he has an eagle next to him. You know, I'm not that strong, but like AJ had a process for me. So you might not remember this, but you told me you're like, okay, so here's how I do it. I have my camera open here, and then I'm recording here, and then I'll go over to the store, and you have and you have the tabs open, so you like pop over the tab and get over there. Da, 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 ta- and if if the play comes back over, you switch over to your camera again, and you're doing it, and then you go over here and you finish your story. If you guys think it's easy, I just want you guys to understand what Ty does is not easy and what AJ does is not easy. It is not easy to do a story left and right trying to get as much content as you possibly can to tag these players because there is a process. So I just have to shout that out. I was thinking of that as, as soon as AJ said I'm like, people might think that you're making graphics are too easy. I mean, how many games have we covered now, Shane? I can, his ability to get both teams is ridiculous. Yeah. I could be really good for one team, but both teams, he's like a robot. It's yeah, a- dude. It just got it down. It's a lot more fun doing it with one of you guys there. I'll say that. It's I a lot more it. but at the same time, I do like getting both teams because then whoever wins, I can make a reel for because I got the, I'm uh, I'm addicted to reels now. So yeah. it's fun. It's fun. AJ's having fun with it all. But yeah, that's what we do behind the scenes. Everyone thinks it's just oh, it's social media. It's and, so easy. I'm like, nah. And dude. since we're going around here, I mean your ability to cut these podcasts and put out a full production uncanny my friend and you've been doing it for years Fireball. Ah, too nice too nice look at us let's all start crying and then call the show <laughs> all right so as we get into the second half of our show guys i want to touch base on something from last week we had some good coverage last week some pretty cool games i mean like we just mentioned earlier ty was over at mountain view you got to watch uh baylor drop a 32 piece and just dominate we were talking to coach about that earlier uh aj you had an opportunity to catch your boys at centennial two times if i'm not mistaken um uh, and they looked hot. So the five ASIC is kind of shaking out. We already kind of knew that from about two or three weeks ago. You got Eagle and Hawaii at the top. And then there's a little bit of a drop when it goes down. But Centennial starting to hit a little bit of a flow. When they're hitting, they're doing, they do well. When they play together and they actually hit shots, they're, they're pretty tough to beat. Granted, I don't know if they're necessarily at, at that next level with Hawaii and Eagle. But I want to let AJ elaborate real quick on the Centennial that he saw last week against a very talented Meridian team and they pretty much controlled them for the most part. And then that real CHS game, which is a rivalry game, granted capital's not at their top of their peak right now or at their peak this season, but it's a rivalry game. So anything happens and they pulled it out on the road there too. So AJ, talk to us about your boys over at Centennial. Yeah, no, I, I just want to give us a shout out right now. I mean, the season's not over. All right. Uh, I know other people have been posting about, you know, the power rankings. I know the Statesman came out and they had their, power rankings and then our boy rbc post said oh mine's so close i don't think people realize we picked we did pick a why he first and as of now it's eagle so we got that backwards right but three through six we're right on centennial is third right now meridian is fourth mountain view's fifth and timberline is sixth i believe i believe that's where we're at so pat on the back to to us as a group another group hug yeah absolutely but uh that centennial team you know, after they lost to Hawaii early in the year, I mean, and I told you guys right when it happened, I said, I'm going to get so much trash talk for this. And it was, it's as bad as I've ever gotten. Um, but now they're, they're showing that, that they are that team, but there is a gap between a Hawaii Eagle and then everybody else. And I think it's a Hawaii Eagle, you know, Madison Lake city, and then everybody else, which we talked about on the last show, but this centennial team has the ability, like I've said before, to beat anybody and then they have the ability to shoot horribly and lose to anybody i mean they shot one for 18 from three uh in the first half against rocky and and they lost that game to rocky uh they didn't have kyle shabbat or west johnson which are two huge pieces but they can lose to anybody uh it's going to be interesting this wednesday they're rolling right now they beat meridian they won the, the real chs which i know was against capital but it's a rivalry game on the road it's tough um they won that game found a way and, and they feel good about themselves. Now they get to go to a Waihe after getting beat by a Waihe by 30 at the start of the year. And we get to really see where they're at. Have they improved? Have they really improved? Uh, because they beat almost everybody they're supposed to beat, except Rocky. And then they did beat Meridian, which we all picked against them. Who are they? I think we all know who they are. They're a roller coaster ride, right? You got the ups and the downs. Um but they are so talented. They have so many guys that that can shoot the ball and so many guys that can drop 15 or drop 20, including Peyton Knutes in the freshman and Andrew Deaton and guys like that off the bench who can do it. Have we seen them play their best? I do not believe so. Um, 
I think there's still going to come a point where they play somebody that we don't expect them to be able to play with, and I think they can beat them, um, whether that's a Waihee this Wednesday or in the district tournament or state. I'm not sure. But this is a team I would love to see on, on the Idaho center floor, big college-sized floor. It is a tough place to shoot, and we've seen them not shoot well and how ugly they can look. And you look at them like, how is this team even relevant? But then when you see them play well, uh, you see why. And I've had people who were talking crap at the start of the year come back and see, okay, I can see what you mean. But they're just such a roller coaster ride. But they're they're a scary team, uh, and and they've got a lot of a lot of pieces. So we will see. You know who I've been most impressed with was Wes Johnson. I, I think Wes is doing such a good job, not just scoring but facilitating. I love his move. Like he he likes to go in to put his back to the basket, a little spin, and and he facilitates. He finds the guys. Yeah, dude. <laughs> West West Johnson. My favorite part is that I took that picture. Yeah. Oh, you did? That's <laughs> that's why I like it so much. No, hey, but Weston Johnson, you know, I, Jack Payne and Liam Campbell for me are the two best players in the league. And then I think it's Weston Johnson and Donovan Jones. And me and my brother in law were having a conversation the other night about who would you rather have, Donovan Jones or Weston Johnson? And we couldn't come to a conclusion because they're both so above average at everything. I think Donovan. Donovan's probably a better defender, but Weston is a better shooter uh, outside. So Weston Johnson is in that conversation for first team all conference for me. He does everything well. The other day he had seven points, seven assists, seven rebounds. Game before that uh, against Meridian, he had 13, eight and eight. I mean, he is that close to a triple double all the time. We talked about that at the start of the year. Uh, Weston Johnson deserves some recognition. And as does, as does Tyler ship who is leading the league in blocks and is a force on defense Um and if he can, if he can go to takeover mode on offense, which he's going to need to do against some of these better teams, including a Waihee on Wednesday, they yep. could be very tough to beat, especially with all those other shooters. I think I think Ty, Ty Ship is ultimately their X factor. I know West yeah. West does a yeah. little bit of it all, but especially mm-hmm. against a team like a Waihee or Eagle with some bigger matchups, he's going to need to establish himself down low, get some of these guys in foul trouble, like we saw Eagle do with a Waihee. Ultimately, I think if they're going to get to that next level, he's got to be, you know, dropping 18, 20 a game and just taking over. 100. I want to he, he elaborate, I wanna elaborate on that while, we're, while, yeah. while we've got them on here right now. We're talking about West. We're talking about Ty and the, the surrounding pieces. I mean, they're they're scary when they're hitting. But to that point, Ty, you were mentioning why he I want to ask you guys this question. We're here right now talking about this. That game is this week on Wednesday. We saw we saw the, the first matchup. I think Centennial got shell shocked a little bit. Uh, they weren't hitting their shots. They had shots. People want to say like, "Oh, it was a why he's physicality." That I, I disagree with that. I think Centennial had shots, open shots that game. Have mm-hmm. you? They missed a lot of them. That was one of those games that AJ just spoke about, where you almost think, "How are these guys even relevant?" Uh, it's not no disrespect to them, but that's just kind of like they're, sometimes when they're low, it looks bad. But if they can get those same looks and they go in, it could be a much different game. But I want to see, you know, we know a why he has improved immensely since that first matchup. They've improved a ton since the Eagle loss, obviously, just with their overall defensive effort. They are just dogs on defensive side of the floor. Defensive side of the floor. Do you guys, I'll start with Ty, do you think that uh, Centennial can match with the why he in the rematch? You know, I, I don't. I think that this will be a 12-point a victory for a why he, I'll say. Um, I don't know if you consider that hanging with them or not. I do think you, you nailed that last point though. Centennial had open looks that entire game that the first half, they just shot so incredibly poorly that, you know, it, it looked worse than it could have been. Um, I just said Ty ship is the X factor, but Caden Christensen, another X factor. Uh, and he's starting, I ha- I've only seen them play once in the last month and a half or so. Um, but from everything I've seen you guys putting out, he seems to kind of just keep getting hotter, keep getting hotter, and is getting his confidence and getting his role figured out. They have they have the capability to make a game of this. I think, like AJ said, that they're due for a a game that they go into go into it and you know maybe shouldn't win but do. They're due for that. They're capable of it. I don't think it's going to be this game. I think that might be, you know, maybe a districts game or if they get into state, maybe a state game that they go and, you know, get a big upset that they might need. I don't think, I think with how, why he's been playing, I just, I don't see it. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I, I believe in my guys. I, I mean, I coached half this team, and I believe they can do it. Uh, I think in that gym is going to be difficult. Uh, I, you know, we, we've got number two versus number three. A white, he can't drop another game because if they do, Eagle clinches. Uh, if Eagle doesn't lose another game, they, 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 they're the one seed. They win the league outright, the league title, and then we go to districts. But, um, man, Caden Christensen, like you said, he's been getting going a little bit. He's been finding a rhythm. He's a guy that's going to have to shoot well early and get going. Weston Johnson. The problem with them in, in this game, in my opinion, is that Liam Campbell and Jack Payne are so good defensively uh, that they match up super well with Weston Johnson and Tyler Ship. And then you've got the rest of those Hawaii guys, which are much more physical than the rest of those Centennial guys. So when those other guys, those other guys are going to have to step up. Hayden Fletcher is going to have to have his, his biggest game of the year. Christensen's going to have to have 15 plus. Dean's going to have to hit shots. Knudsen, Kyle Shabbat's going to have to rebound and, and play Rasmussen tough when he's improving every game. I don't like the matchup for Centennial. I think they can play with them. They can play fast. They can score a lot. They're going to have to. Sh- they're going to have to hit 15 plus threes to be in this game, which they can do. Tough place to do it though against that defense. I don't know. I, I, I'm with Ty. I'm, I'm not sure, but. I hope they do it because I want my dudes to get that win that that I think they have in them. I just think they can't get rattled. It's it's you're gonna have to see. This is it's a good test going into districts and state though because from here on out, like if you want to win, it's that's the type of basketball that's gonna be played in districts and state. That's physical the whole game. Why he does that the whole game? They press you every single basket, made or miss, make or miss. It's a press. Up, they're just they got their face in your face, and it's annoying. But you got to stay poised and controlled to be able to just get through that. Um, if they can do that, great. Uh, I think it's going to be difficult for them as well. Now, I want to talk about this next point here. Uh, our boys over there, Ty got to co- cover them a little bit too this week. Boise. Boise gets, I'm going to put this here at the bottom here, in the win column. All right? Shout out to our guys over in Boise. Um, and I want Ty to, to be able to talk about this because he was able to see this happen. Um, we were waiting for them. We were waiting for the Brave to – Get that W. Um, and you, you talked about Jude Porter in the first win, and then obviously getting hurt, which is a downside, but you can talk about that more. But Boise gets the win column twice last week. Uh, they finally tasted that that W at the right time, I feel, um, as the season's going, uh, as they continue to progress. So, Ty, let's talk about Boise. I'll start by saying that not picking them to win against Rocky will be my biggest regret of the season. We talked about that. We both I know. Agree. So I guess my first question, if I would have picked Boise, would you have also picked Boise, AJ? I, I don't um, – pro- no, honestly, probably not, which is going to make you more upset. Oh, I don't think I would have. I'm going to lose my one now. I'm going to lose my one. I know. No, because no, look, because I was going to, and I didn't even know about Jude yet, and then you guys were like, yeah, yeah dude, Jude got hurt. I was like, I can't take Boise then. But I still wanted to because so shout out to uh, yeah. the Boise faithful that were at the game because I was talking to them pregame and they're like, yeah, Jude's out. But honestly, if they play like they did last night, we could see them winning again. And I was like, man, with Jude out, that's going to be tough. But we knew we've known all season. We had these guys that are our 12, our 12 spot in the power rankings, which has proven to be just a roller coaster all season, whoever's placed there. But uh, these guys, this is a talented group with some guys that are like the guys that are capable of going and scoring 25 a game and hitting clutch shots and closing things out and doing the, the hustle plays. Right. And just playing smart. Uh, that's what these guys are. We've seen, we've seen, uh, Jude Porter. We've seen Jacob Thompson. We've seen Braden Rhodes. We've seen Marco Rosalini. These are some talented guys. And then you throw in Joseph Curtis, uh, Luke Britt, very talented, hardworking unit that, you know, goes 0-13 and, and then two straight nights gets up, gets wins. Um, Rocky has struggled to find an identity all season long, uh, much like, you know, really much like Skyview, much like Boise. Uh, I would say Bora's in that same category. Some talent, talented groups that just haven't, you know, quite clicked. Um, Boise, I think, you know, we'll see if Jude can get back, get back on the court for them. It, if he's able to come back, I don't, I don't know if he's going to be able to, but if he's able to, this is a team I wouldn't count out for making a run in districts. Um, I think that they're capable now. They've, they've seen that they can win. And uh, I, I'm really proud of him. Jacob Thompson popped off for 28 points. And I was talking to Coach Grove after the game, and 
that was the most effortless 28 point outing I've seen all season. Uh, it was just, I mean, he probably went six for seven from beyond, beyond the, the arc and just, you know, hit, hit the big buckets when they needed him. Uh, he's, he's our, one of our gem session, uh, hidden gems of the week, him and Baylor Perrin fortunate enough to watch both of them play this week. That was, uh, you know, a joy for me to see a guy go off for 32, another effortless outing from Baylor Perrin. And then Jacob Thompson, the next night goes off for 28. So fun, fun week for me to see some of our guys, uh, you know, be able to have some success and get some wins for their teams. For sure. Super sixty and Boise getting that the, the W though. I I just I was so happy for those guys. We've talked about it on the show all season long. We know who they are. We've coached a few of them in, in, in club ball. We just we love those guys. We know how talented they are. It's just a matter of putting stuff together and getting wins. It's similar to Centennial. We want we know how talented they are and we know what their capabilities are, like AJ was saying. And when he comes out and says that and then they, they don't show up, you know, you still defend them because you know how talented these guys are. I hate the casual fans. That are they look at a record? They're stat watchers. They just look at stats. Oh, they're zero and thirteen. No, 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 no. It's like, dude, we know that there's talent there. Oh yeah, everybody says that. No, we knew what was coming. I'm glad they got the W. And yeah, like you said, I would like to see them if they can get Jude healthy. That would be sick. Maybe they yeah, may have matchup problems. I don't know. They're they're, they're going to struggle. I think if if he's not able to get back, they have you know some firepower, but I don't know if it's uh, lasting firepower. If, yeah. if he's not in the lineup. Uh, Corey Cadwell is also out for the season, I just found out, which is – And he did go down that game, yeah. Yeah, he's out for the year, which he's their senior leader, point guard, facilitator. That That's a tough loss also. But these guys have been through it all this year anyway. They're, they're, we know they're a tough group that's going to fight, 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 and and keep improving. So good luck to them. I want to I wanna touch base briefly as we get through to the next uh, two – a few, uh, next few little things on the show as we wrap this one up today. Uh, Ridgeview versus BK. Um, we, we had an opportunity to go, uh, AJ and I at least had an opportunity to go over it to, to Ridgeview. I want to give a shout out to them. I know, to, again, to the stat watchers that are out there, they'll say Ridgeview's uh, this and that, whatever. They're not doing very well. It's a down season. Uh, but Coach Vince over there trying to change the culture up a little bit. And we got to go watch a few of our guys um, over there. Um, what's interesting is I was talking to some of the people in the stands that know me um, from church and so forth. And they were like, Oh, I know you guys are here for BK and blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm like, listen, no, we're here to cover both teams. Like we, there's some talented athletes on this team. Like that's what I want to get out there. Um, while BK pretty much dominated that entire game. Um, the talent is just at an, another level across the board for BK uh, in regards to that. Uh, but Ridgeview has some dogs. So briefly, can we just talk about that we had an opportunity to go there. I love the facility. Shout out to the people over there. I actually love their student section. They showed out for their game that they knew was probably not going to go their way. And Ridgeview actually battled the very next game against Middleton as well. I mean, they're they're out there trying to compete and get their their culture. They're a very young team. But um, AJ, talk about some of the guys that you know from Ridgeview, so we can give them a little bit of a shout out here. Yeah, Isaac Mercer is a senior guard. I had a chance to coach him club ball two years ago, and and he didn't try out for me. One of his buddies uh, came up to me and said, Hey, I got a guy that played varsity basketball last year as a sophomore started for us and he's not playing club. I said, yeah, bring him out. So he came out and he has been one of the kids that has surprised me most. He blew my mind. He was, I was the best player on my club team that year. Isaac Mercer is a kid that popped off this summer for select. He reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, uh, are you coaching club this summer? I said, I'm not doing the summer. He's like, uh, what should I do? And I said, well, I, I have a buddy of mine that's coaching over at Select that needs needs a point guard. At, would you be interested? Uh, coach James Jansen at College of Idaho, shout out to him, good uh, college buddy of mine. Uh, so I put uh, sent Mercer that way, and Mercer just blew up. He's getting college looks now. He's a college point guard. It's tough for him because he's surrounded as a senior point guard with Dante Salinas, who's a sophomore scorer. You've got Ty D'Souza, who's a sophomore post. He, he's going to grow into his body. You've got Tristan uh, Correa Book, who's a freak athlete, 6'5". He's a sophomore. You, he's starting to mature. And then they got the freshman, uh, Javante Bowles. And then the other freshman shooter, uh, his name's Tucker, forget, uh, Tiddens. Tucker Tiddens. So it goes Mercer and then two, two freshmen and three sophomores. And they've got some talent, man. Like Coach Vint is definitely already on his way to building something. I love Isaac Mercer being at the helm there. Um, cause he's such a good facilitator. He's a Weston Johnson type guy. I wish he would be a little bit more selfish, but you can't be mad at a kid for trying to get everybody involved, but they have a chance when it comes to districts. They're, they're like a centennial with that talent, even though they're young, they could go upset somebody. 
they could go upset somebody and then find a way to get to the state tournament in that that last seed or get to the playing game or something. So shout out to Ridgeview was very impressed. Even though they got beat, they had to deal with Tommy Hunter, Blake Hawthorne, Aiden McGarvin. Nobody does well with that trio. Tommy Hunter is balling right now, by the way. Yeah. Tommy Hunter is one of the best players in the state right now with the way he's playing, facilitating, shooting, finishing. And then, of course, Blake Hawthorne and, and McGarvin are always doing their thing. But I, it was a 20-point loss. But you can see that Ridgeview has something there. Whether it happens at any point this year, it will start happening next year for sure with, with the maturity. But uh, I'd like to see it this year because Isaac Mercer, I'm a huge fan. I'm probably his biggest fan. Um, and I, I'd, I'd like to see them go – just go surprise everybody and, and start that turnaround for sure. And I want to give a shout out to Dante Salinas as well. I, I got to, the opportunity to coach Dante and I know how talented that kid is too. He, he is extremely talented um, and he has a lot of potential. And so I want people to be paying attention to Ridgeview as well. Just understand there's talent across the board. We have talent here in Idaho. We call them the hidden gems, right? That's, that's what they are, right? They're, they're the ones that are hidden uh, here in Napa, Idaho, you know, on a team that's, struggling together as a team with the record wise, but they do have talent over there. Um, I will say this to any Ridgeview player or parent who is listening to this podcast. You got to get your kids in the gym though. Uh, one of the things I've heard from multiple people, not just one person, but multiple people that are connected to that program, the the dedication to the weight room and the off season stuff is not necessarily at the level it probably should be. If you guys go back and rewind, listen to coach Nettleton from earlier today, that's how you got to do it. You've got to put the time in. If you're serious about building something and being successful at what you're doing here on the court, you've got to be putting time in in the weight room. You got to be putting time in on the court, getting shots up, because that is to – he said, shooters are made in the summer in the gym. That's the note I took up here. So that's what Coach Nettleton said. Get in the weight room. Get in the gym. Be doing those things in the off season because, like you said, AJ, they're all young. They're growing into their bodies. Ty Souza's growing into their body, right? that's how you do it. You got to start lifting weights. You got to start working because when your body starts to develop, that's when you can become lethal um, as a basketball player. So as we go into the next session here, as we're finishing up the show, what's on tap for this week, guys, I'm going to start with Ty. We have some like good basketball games and I was bummed because I was like, dude, the best games are the nights that I won't be able to make it, unfortunately, but we got some coverage coming your guys' way. Ty, let's talk about this week. Yes. Yeah, so uh, for me in particular, my focus will be on the uh, 5A SIT girls districts. Uh, that, that starts up technically not this Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday we'll be playing games for the district tournament, but I, I basically consider this round one. Um, I, will be, uh, I will be at Mountain View versus Centennial, uh, the eight seed and nine seed, I believe. Two teams that have some, you know, really talented athletes, but uh, – I would say as, as a whole have underachieved this year. Mountain View's kind of struggled with injuries. Um, but Centennial's got one of the top scorers uh, in the state whose now, now name I'm blanking on, but I know AJ knows it. Yeah, I think it's uh, Stenar. That is Annie correct. Annie or Ashley uh, Stenar, but she's going to Wyoming. She got a D1 offer to Wyoming, that, and so she's she, she's a D1 athlete. Yep. So we'll, we'll see her, her on display Tuesday. Uh, leading into uh, this week's action, so round two will be Thursday night, or you know, essentially the first uh, first round with the final eight teams of the girls' SIC. Uh, and then Saturday night we have got uh, the sem the semifinals. So it'll be the top four teams in the SIC determine who will play uh, next. Uh, let's see here, next Friday. So whoever wins Saturday will have a few days off before they get back at it. Uh, on Friday to determine the SIC champion. Um, Timberline has been running the show in the SIC. Boise, another really talented team. Them and Bora, you know, I think they split their season series this year at one apiece. Uh, those three teams are the, are the t three teams to beat. Um, you know, you got Eagle, Hawaii, Rocky, maybe, you know, Centennial or Mountain View kind of in that second tier. And then, you know, the third tier below that with CUNA Capital and Skyview. But right now it, it's Timberlines to lose. This team has, uh, you know, two, two D1 commits with Audrey Taylor and Sophie Glancy. I thought Lake City was the team to beat up north, but I think uh, my tune may be changing back to uh, the Wolves down here uh, in the Valley. So Ooh. exciting stuff on the girls, girls scene this week and uh, should be a fun, fun week. Heck yeah. AJ, what do we got? on your side this week that we're going to be providing coverage for? 
Uh, man, I'm going to go, I mean, for sure, hang out across the street from my house over here at, at a Waihi with my guy, Weston Johnson, who's just Mr. Fun Guy here. Uh, can't wait to see him again. He's a great time. Uh, so I'm going to go watch Centennial of I ha- I mean, I have to. I, I want to see if how much growth Centennial uh, is, is going to be able to show and, and see if we can't get a good game there. And there's definitely going to be some highlights. Uh, so that'll be Wednesday night. And then Friday, I will be attending Eagle at home against Boise. Uh, I'm going to all of my Eagle boys uh, senior night. So that, that'll be a that'll be probably an emotional night for myself, uh, to be honest with you. And then I'm sure they'll put on a show for us as well. But I might try to catch some of these girl games uh, with Ty since they're so offset from the guys this week. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed up. I'm going to miss that Centennial Hawaii game, but I do have to go. Uh, have to go scout out the Cavender Twins from Fresno State. Got to watch them all out against Boise State. So uh, can't be mad. Have fun at Hawaii, but I'll be I'll be watching them. Yeah, you have fun doing that, and uh, and I'll I'll just I'll I'll provide the coverage for you while while you go have a, a great Wednesday night, my I'll friend. Provide coverage for you. It'll be great. Yeah, everyone's providing coverage. Uh, what a guy, everybody. Um, just a side note, I'm going to try to hit up a Rocky game on Friday night. I think they got Meridian at home um on on friday night but it depends on what my schedule's like i'm kind of bummed this week like i said i got a lot a lot of stuff happening and because of schedules as you guys know we all work full-time jobs different schedules are different things things going on um didn't work out for me this week for a couple of the big ones but i'm gonna try my hardest to make something uh at least once this week if not twice not twice uh but we'll be providing the coverage you guys make sure you're following us on instagram i'm gonna try to put this here on the screen if you guys are looking at here come on now throw this on here at Idaho Underground Sports on Instagram. That is our main platform. So make sure you're following us there. We're also on Twitter at ID Underground SN. We're almost to 900 followers as we're recording this. So we would love to get to 1,000 here shortly before the season ends, at least, maybe even before districts. So follow us over there as we continue to uh, make moves. And then the merch game, IUSN Flames stands for Idaho Underground Sports Network, flames.com. Go there and copy your merch. We've got uh, everything. We've got Boise Sports Talk, we've got EBC, we've got Game Time Guru, we've got Idaho Underground Sports Network gear. We've even got Cherry Films over there uh, with, with some gear that he, you can buy. So if you want to support us, feel free to go over there and buy some merch and, and help us out there. But make sure you guys are uh, subscribed to the podcast here on YouTube. Share it with your friends and family so we can get the word out there as we continue to build this because we're making this momentum right now and we're hoping to bring that into next year as well and, and into the baseball season and, and on through the summer. So for, don't forget to send, don't forget to send your grandparents to Facebook. That, that's a great point. To t- yes, please. We have a Facebook as well. I forgot to put that up here. That is relatively new within the last two weeks, but we do have a Facebook page that we are providing content on, and we do have almost 150 people on there so far. So continue to bring people over there, your grandparents and uh, and and parents alike. I loved it. That was one of my favorite things Ty posted. So, uh, good stuff. We're on all the platforms except for TikTok, which might be down the line, which we'll discuss later. We are the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and we'll be coming to you guys next time with another episode.